Sunrise family and welcome. My name is Charlie Brown and we are happy that you have chosen to worship with us today. Whether you're new to Sunrise or have attended worship on a regular basis, please take a moment to check in using the Sunrise app on your phone by clicking the worship check-in button. If you haven't downloaded the app yet, simply search Sunrise Church O'Fallon in the app store. You can also find yellow attendance cards at the back of the worship space near the offering boxes. On the reverse side, you can share your prayer requests. You can drop these cards in the offering boxes at any time before or after each worship service. And now I'm excited to share some upcoming opportunities with you and there's something for everyone in the family. Ready to learn more about our welcoming church community? Next Saturday, April 13th, come join our new member class. It's a fantastic opportunity to explore what our church is all about and make new friends along the way. We'll dive into our values, mission, and ways you can get involved. There's still time to sign up, so make sure you visit the link you see on the screen. Every act of kindness helps, so let's come together to make a difference in the lives of others. Sign up now for our upcoming blood drive at the end of April. Appointments are highly encouraged to ensure we can save as many lives as possible. Your donation can mean the world to someone in need. Sign up today on the link you see on the screen. The Sunrise College Scholarship in honor of Troy S. Bierenbaum has been established to fulfill the church's mission to populate the kingdom of heaven. The financial assistance can be used for the next upcoming academic year at a college of the recipient's choice. Sunrise Church believes each scholarship recipient should possess the same qualities that Troy Berenbaum has demonstrated, such as faith, determination, and perseverance. To find out more, you can view the online application on the link you see on the screen. As Charlie Brown would say, be yourself because no one can set you through.
Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, and is coming into the world. Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, and is coming into the world. place and fill this place with your Holy Spirit, that we may worship you and give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be than here in your love. Here in your love. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be than here in your love. Here in your love. Set a fire down in my soul, one I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. I want more. I want more. I want more. I want more. I want more of you. Pour it Please be seated and join me for a moment of prayer. God, there's no place we would rather be. God, there's no place you'd rather be than in your love. There's no place you'd rather be this morning than here at sunrise in this community of believers, this fellowship of friends. God, thank you for the opportunity to be here with you this morning, to worship you, to praise you, to, uh, to set that fire in our soul, to be open to that, God, is our prayer. We ask you to to open up our ears and our hearts for the message this morning that Pastor Jim is about to bring. God, put apart, put away our fears, our anxieties, our stresses from this past week, the things that went well and the things that didn't go quite our way. God, make them a distant memory. Let us stay focused in this time together that we might learn ways to share your love, to follow the Great Commission, God, to, to be with you and to share the wonderful news of Christ crucified, his death on the cross and his resurrection that brings us new life. Let us learn how to share that, not meekly, but boldly. To share that message with those around us, to those who we meet every day, God, to those that we love and those that we have yet to meet. God, we look forward to that opportunity of, of learning that lesson today, of putting it in practice this week, and, um, and just having this opportunity to be with you and you alone for this morning. Now, please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against you. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Good morning. It's good to see all of you guys here. You came back after Easter. Look at that. You guys get a special ribbon today. So good to see you guys. I'm glad that you're able to be here. My name is BJ Phil. I'm the executive director here at Sunrise. 
Um, if you haven't had a chance to fill out one of these Connect cards that Charlie mentioned at the beginning, um, they are located in the back. We're currently working on a way to get them more conveniently at your seats, but if you would take an opportunity to fill that out, especially if you are new, um, we would love to get in touch with you, to know where you're at on your spiritual journey, to help you take next steps. Um, there's no greater love in this world than the love of Christ. And to experience that with a fellowship, with a, with a group of believers, is the most powerful thing you can do. And so we want to be that for you. We want to walk alongside you. So if this is your first time with us, or maybe you've never filled one out, please grab one. They're at the Connection Center also. You can fill it out on the right-hand side, the I'm new part, and put it in the box. Um, if you guys have worshiped with us regularly, there's, of course, the check-in on there, also on the app that you can do from your phone. Um, and then the prayer request. Prayer, prayer is a powerful tool in the Christian toolbox. So if you have a need, a concern, a celebration you want to share with the prayer warriors, please fill that out as well. I um, want to uplift a couple things that are coming up in the life of Sunrise. We are passionate about missions. We used to do this thing called Serve Saturday, um, and we realized that the community needs us more than just once every quarter. And so we started this Sunrise on Mission where there's constantly opportunities to plug in, constantly opportunities to, um, to share what you know about Jesus, to serve those around you who might need some extra help. Um, and so there's a couple of them coming up that I want to highlight. One's Ronald McDonald House going and making a meal there, a breakfast for the families. Um, you can find that at sunrisefamily.org slash serve. And then there's also packing food bags. Those go out to the Fort Zumwalt School District. Um, we collect food all the time, and we're sending out 30 to 40 bags a week. But we are one of just many churches, and we are just one church of many groups of people that support Fort Zumwalt. And so every once in a while, they get together, and they have a big food packing party, um, usually at West High School. So you can sign up for that also. It's a grab train. That's a really good one if you have young kids. Um, who can just get engaged. Everybody, it's like an assembly line. I keep putting boxes of rice in a bag kind of a thing. So um, sunrisefamily.org slash serve or missions on your app or events on your app or find me and tell me you want to do it and we'll figure it out. So, um, and then of course, all missions and ministries are because of your guys' generosity. So the different ways that you can support the church financially to make sure that we are continuing to be the hands and feet of Christ in our community is appreciated. Now, if you guys take a minute real fast, greet each other, say hello. Pastor Jim's going to bring up the word. Oh, just keep it up. Just keep it up. That sounds good from up here. It is great to see everyone here this morning. Uh, this is uh, the first Sunday in a new sermon series, which means uh, it is our tradition here that we remind ourselves who we are, uh, we remind ourselves whom we belong to, uh, and we remind ourselves how uh, we are to serve the God who has created us. So uh, what all that means is uh, we get the, the pleasure of blending all of our voices uh, together, both in building as well as those worshiping with us online, as we lift up together the Apostles' Creed. So join with me in this historic statement of our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting Amen. Amen. Isn't that just great? Uh, and I saw many of you out there with your eyes closed doing this from memory. I hope that's why your eyes were closed. We're doing it from memory. But wow, what a great thing to commit to our memory. So we begin a new series today. And, and I have a, a confession type story to make. Maybe you are like me. I am one of those people that, uh, that occasionally wake up about a half hour before my alarm goes off. And I was like, oh, a half hour, I'm wasting awake. But there is that, that uh, kind of a, 
mix between being awake, being asleep, uh, and, and I have some of my greatest thoughts in that time before I'm really awake. And I will say, earlier this week, I had this tremendous, I mean, unbelievable, like over-the-top illustration that I was going to use for this morning as we kick off this new sermon series about That's Good News. I mean, it was amazing. I was like so excited. And then I kind of drifted off to sleep, and I wake up, and I go, what was that? (laughs) I remember that it was amazing and exciting and wonderful and over the top, and like you folks would be awed and inspired, and and I wouldn't even have to preach the rest of the sermon after I did that illustration. (laughs) And I couldn't remember it. And I spent all the rest of this week trying to pull it back into my memory. I would, even, I would even say, let me put myself back in that spot, and maybe it'll come back to me. You ever done that when you're trying to remember something? You, you go back and retrace, and it didn't come. Got to yesterday, I said, I'm going to put the full court press on this, because it will come back. And I was, I, I was like, I woke up this morning, and it still wasn't there. I mean, I, I even stood up here at the 8 o'clock service thinking, okay, Lord, just give it back to me. <laughs> because it was amazing. It was unbelievable. It was awesome. It's like over the top. It explains the whole next uh, six weeks of this sermon series. And it didn't happen. And I thought, why? Then I realized, then I realized that really that was the sermon illustration, not remembering. Being all excited about doing something, getting all excited and then not doing it. Because that kind of explains, in many ways, The good news of sharing Jesus Christ. I get all excited about sharing Jesus. I I can work up this great speech. I can think about, oh, there's a person I want to witness to, and then they arrive. Or I come into contact with that person, and I freeze. Like, oh, come on. It's kind of like, that I can relate to, it's kind of like a nerdy guy trying to strike up a conversation with the most popular girl in school. You know, your hands get all sweaty and your, your knees get all wobbly and, and you're ready to speak and nothing comes out. And the opportunity passes by. That describes, in many cases, what the next five weeks, six weeks, will address in That's Good News. So that's probably not as great of a sermon illustration as the one I forgot but I want you to know that's, that describes me. Now, now, I also want to let you know another illustration that I thought of this morning as well was that, that none of us are an island unto ourselves. Because many times we think in our Christian walk, uh, we get Jesus and we are excited about Jesus and we wrap our arms around a relationship with Jesus and we think we are good. We don't have to do anything else. Our ticket to heaven has been punched. But if we're honest, and we really look what's in Scripture, I love, I love that song the kids sang. I tell you how God designs worship. They were supposed to sing last week during Easter. Everybody decided to go on spring break. <laughs> You'd probably been one little kid up here by himself singing if we'd have followed through. So, so we decided to reschedule that for this morning. I was not aware of the songs they were singing. What was the first one? Go and make disciples. That's what this whole series is about. So they, they kind of put that there for us. So I was, I, I, we're, like, you know, we're doing small groups with this series. And I hope you have taken the opportunity to sign up to be part of a small group. Like there are a plethora of them on, on our website that you can join. They begin this week. Uh, and so everybody meeting, in fact, there's a group meeting right now that was at the 8 o'clock service. Uh, they're already started. They're doing their group study. Uh, and, and I'm leading one on Wednesday night here at the church. And so if you haven't found one and you're looking for one, you can, you can plug in with ours as well. Uh, and, and so I decided, you know, it'd be smart to kind of know what I'm doing. Uh, so <laughs> kind of helps, doesn't it, if you're leading the group. So I picked up the leader's guide last week, and I began to, to look at the first lesson for this week. And I realized that I should have paid attention about three months ago. Because when I looked at the leader's guide, uh, it said that this week we're covering chapters one and two in the book. 
Well, I had not prepared for chapters one and two for this sermon. I was going to start off with kind of an intro to the sermon uh, and then next week do chapters one and two. But then I realized, oh, I'm out of sync. So I go into my Excel spreadsheet that has all of the worship stuff in there. And I just take the, this week's intended uh, sermon, move it down to May 12th and scoot everything up one. No problem. I'm on cue. But, but I'm not an island unto myself. Because I realized that, oh, wait a minute, there are a whole group of folks who are dependent upon what that Excel spreadsheet says. Uh, we have three satellite campuses, and, and each of those folks in those satellite campuses uh, use the same focus that we have every week at those campuses. Oh, I thought on Tuesday, I better let them know. So I sent them an email. I, I felt sorry for the person who really schedules and works ahead and probably already had their sermon already planned on what now is going to be May 12th for this week. So, whew, okay, I'm good. Then Wednesday at worship planning, oh, <laughs> duh, there is like a whole set of graphics that go with the online campus uh, that they pre-make so that they can just attach that when the online campus goes out. So, oh, I better let the graphics people know that they've already done their work, but they're going to do it again. Because no person is an island unto themselves. I thought, whew, I'm good. Until yesterday afternoon, Grant, who picks out all of our 8 o'clock music, texts me and says, I've noticed that the sermons has changed for this week. And the song that I picked out for next week goes with the title for this week. I go, Grant, sorry, forgot to let you know that we're changing everything. So I told the 8 o'clock folks that we're singing next week's songs or this week's songs next week, and it will make sense somehow. So I realized that since no person is an island unto themselves, how many of us treat our salvation and our faith about Jesus as only for me? Because see, witnessing, sharing, Inviting is all about letting other people know what Jesus means to you. And we're not really particularly good at that. We've got it. Let them figure out how we got it. But I will tell you that every one of you here that says, claims, has professed faith in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, somebody, somebody shared that with you. You didn't figure it out on your own. Somebody helped you get there so that you can say yes to Jesus. And, and so we're going to be exploring over these next several weeks what it means to have a faith and what we do with that faith. Now, now we're, going to, we're going to start off today, we're going to lead off today uh, with, with what I called uh, the E word. You know the E word, evangelism? Uh, and that was going to be a pretty heavy start. That was going to be like the best lead off there could be uh, because we're going to talk about evangelism, but evangelism makes people nervous. If I'd say your task this week is go out and evangelize, you're going to get all like weak in the knees. You're going to, you're going to go, oh, no, pastor, that's what we pay you for. <laughs> hey, I've been to churches as a consultant, uh, and, and they say, oh, we want lots of new people in our church. Uh, and we want our pastor to do more about getting people in the church because that's what we pay the pastor to do. I'm glad you folks don't think that. I'm glad you folks know I'm basically lazy and you have to do it yourself. But you know why their pastor is not good at doing a lot of great evangelism? Because the pastor is typically busy taking care of you folk, helping you grow spiritually. Uh, there's not enough of the pastor to go around to take care of the, the flock as well as go out and find more flock. And so you folks are in places every day of the week that I'm not. You come in contact far more with unbelievers than what I do throughout the week. You folks are on the front lines. I am in the back lines supporting you folks. So when I say evangelism, it's like, oh, can't say that that's the pastor's job. 
Because Jesus said, and what those kids sang, go and make disciples of all nations, wherever you may be. So, so that's why I felt like, wow, maybe we needed to move. God, God said, move that to the bottom. Give us five other weeks of getting ready to talk about evangelism. So what we're going to talk about today is more like the I word. We're going to talk about inviting, because that's kind of the easier part of it. It's a whole lot easier to invite than it is to evangelize. It's a whole lot easier to say, hey, I want you to experience what I'm experiencing at my church. Come on, uh, be part of it. Give us a try. Instead of saying, let me lead you to Christ. So we're going to ease into this. So we're going to kind of lay a foundation today. So those of you that are, that are part of the study, that are leading the study especially, I'm going to throw out several questions today that you can jot down for your group. I'll tell you, my group on Wednesday, we're going to be covering some of these questions I throw out so you're now even more prepared. So let me ask you a question. If I would say to anybody here, everybody in this room gets 10 minutes, 10 minutes to stand right here and share about anything that you are passionate about other than Jesus, Okay. Uh, because I know it would be really easy, so I would talk about Jesus for 10 minutes. Well, set that aside uh, and, and say, whatever else may be your passion, what could you, what would be your subject to stand here and talk about for 10 minutes? 10 minutes with passion and excitement and, and filled with wisdom and knowledge and, and joy about that subject. And then I would say, could you stand here for 10 minutes and talk about Jesus? Could you stand here and share the difference that Jesus has made in your life? Maybe the, maybe the easier question, because that's more of an E question. Let's go to the I question. Maybe the easier question is, could you, could you stand here for 10 minutes uh, and, and share what excites you about being part of Sunrise? Because that will get you to invite somebody is if you are excited about what's happening here. I tell you, I looked at this group of people up here this morning. Wow, that was amazing. Did you, did you see the collection of diversity that we have up here? Let me tell you, I don't care who you are. You saw somebody up here like you this morning. And that's what I love about this church. That's what I love that, that everybody has a spot somewhere in this church. And that's what I'll tell people when I, when I invite, I say, hey, come on, we have a great time. We're, we're, like, we're like this modern church with technology, but we have this hometown feel. I tell you, I can feel when I walk in here, it's like going back to my hometown church. Hey, we're not perfect, but we enjoy what we do here because we love Jesus. So maybe that's the question. You got 10 minutes of what you love about sunrise. And when you figure that out, then you know how you're going to invite people to be part of this church family. So uh, let's talk about this first two chapters that you folks will be studying, be reading about. We got a lot of folks, by the way, that can't fit into a group for some reason, that times just don't work out. Uh, we've got a lot of folks who are just getting the book and doing home study. You can do that. You can pick up your book on the way out, $5, $5, $5 really cheap book. Uh, we got it at a discount. We want to make sure you get it. Uh, you can do the home study yourself and just follow along. And, and So that's why I'm trying to cover some of the stuff in the book in case you're not part of a round study group on, on one of the days of the week. So I thought if we're going to be talking about the foundation of what it means to share the good news, we better start with what is the good news. So, so we've got this working definition that we're going to use for our, our study this, uh, this next five weeks. Uh, the definition for, the, that, for good news is simply this. Uh, the New Testament authors use this term, good news, as the announcement of salvation by God's grace, the forgiveness of sin, the healing of brokenness, and the return of separation from God. Now, that seems like a lot, but really it's pretty simple. We are separated from God because of sin. The sin breaks us as human beings, uh, and we are outside, and God, through His grace, gives us the salvation of eternity, forgives our sin. And there's not one person among us here this morning that doesn't have a sin or sins to be forgiven. 
And when our sins are forgiven, our brokenness is healed. And we're drawn back into connection with God. So when we talk about this is what we're sharing, that's the story you're sharing. You don't have to be able to quote lots of scripture. You just have to say, hey, this is where I was broken. This is where I was hurting. This is where I was separated from God. This is, this is where I needed healing. And God came into my life and changed it. That is, friends, the most powerful witness in the world. And, and if, you know, if you were like me, people say, well, I know what you were like before, so God can do that with you. He can certainly do something with me. There's none of us outside of God's ability to redeem. So that's our working definition for the next six weeks. That's what you'll be using in your classes. So kind of keep that in mind. Uh, and so in, the, in that first and second chapter, there is a, there's a, a set of questions. And I think it's important for us to address those questions so that we can kind of lay the foundation of going forward. So the first question, uh, the first question is, do you trust the testimony of the Bible? Hmm. Because if you don't trust what's in the Bible, then you really don't have anything exciting to invite people to other than just a fun bunch of people that gather together on Sunday mornings. you got to have something that, that makes a difference, something that is worth the investment of your time and your energy and your efforts. And so the question is, the first question we must address is, do you trust what's in the Bible? Because the story of Jesus is in there. Do we take serious of what's in the Bible. So I went, I went to 2 Timothy, a great chapter. Uh, Paul is writing to this young preacher in Ephesus, writing to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, say this. All Scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. Uh, isn't that interesting? That is probably uh, what challenges people most about being uh, trustworthy scripture is that it tells us what we've done wrong. Uh, we live in a society much like what was like at the end of the book of Judges. Remember that in the end of the book of the Judges, one of the most horrifying verses of scripture exist. It says that in that day and time, there was an absence of spiritual leadership. And everyone did what was right in their own eyes. Oh, I shudder at the thought of the world, of everybody doing right in their own eyes. I have to tell you, I'm a Doctor Who fan. I don't know how many of you are as well. I mean, there's a, there's a handful of us really weird people that love Doctor Who. Uh, I don't want to do a spoiler alert thing, but, but like the whole premise of, of the current transition from the previous doctor to the new doctor, David Tennis back. Uh, and anyway, uh, one of the premise, the world is out of control because the evil person in it had convinced everybody that they were always right and that no one was ever wrong, that there were always winners and no losers. Everybody did what was right in their own eyes, and anarchy had taken over the world. You see, the Bible, do you trust the testimony of the Scripture that it is what not only gives us life, but it corrects us? Verse 17 uh, goes on to say, God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. So if we trust the testimony of Scripture, uh, then we have the, the basis, the foundation of the story of Jesus that transforms lives and changes the attitude of people so that every good work is being done. Which brings us then to the second question. The second question is, do you love Jesus enough to share him with people? See, that's part of that no man is an island thing. Do you love Jesus enough to share it with other people? Has Jesus made such an impact on your life that you have seen the transformation and you are wanting to share that because I love Jesus so much, I want people to know what I know. Romans 1, Paul writes this, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. 
to the Jew first, and then also to the Greek. Do you love, do you love Jesus enough to share him with other people? Are you ashamed of the message of Jesus? Uh, are you willing to, to live your life in such a way that it points to who Jesus is? Third question. Here's a tough one. Do you love people enough to share Jesus with them? Do you love people enough that you want them not to be on the outs? Hey, we just finished in the, in the journey of a lifetime study on Wednesday night, and we're uh, about, a, about a week away from finishing uh, the daily walk uh, Bible a reading or the daily blog through the book of Revelation. Uh, and one thing is certain that we have picked from that. People that don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they're not going to be in heaven. That's tough to hear. That's, that breaks people's hearts. We, we have this hope that, well, God is, God is all this lovey stuff only, and God's going to look past people's rebellion. God's going to look past their resistance, and God's just going to go ollie ollie, oxen free. Everybody is, can come into heaven regardless. Well, if we trust Scripture, then we have to trust what the book of Revelation says, and it says only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life will find their way in heaven. And the only way that you get your name in the Lamb's book of life is, is to believe in Jesus Christ. And the only way that you believe in Jesus Christ is to have somebody share that with you. Remember, I asked you, who is that person that shared with you the gospel of Jesus that you said, yes, you need to thank that person. If they are still walking this earth, you need to stop right now, pull out your phone, send them a text message and say, thank you that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life because of your witness. Is anybody's name written in the Lamb's Book of Life because of your witness? Do you love people enough that you want to share Jesus with them? Paul writes to Timothy, this pastor in Ephesus, his young mentee, uh, he's writing, this is probably the last letter that, that, that Paul wrote uh, from a prison in Rome. Uh, 2 Timothy, first chapter, verse number 6 says this, For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Timothy was this young preacher. He was excited. Remember the days when you first met Jesus, how excited you were? I mean, you could, it, it's like trying to hold back a, a, a wild stallion. You want to let everybody know. And then as life goes on, maybe we get older, maybe we get wiser, maybe we get, maybe we get turned down. Maybe you invited people to church and they go, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And after a while, you just kind of go, ah. I'll tell you, folks, I, I have... I have been turned down by inviting people to come to church more than a hotel bedspread. <laughs> Get over it. Get over it. Don't let one person, one person's rejection taint your passion. Uh, the Paul or John writes to the church in Laodicea, Jesus said to them, uh, he says, uh, you are neither hot nor cold. You're lukewarm. And you know what happens to lukewarm churches, friends? They cease to exist. They just kind of filter away. When the last person dies in the church, they'll shut the lights off, turn the water off, put a for sale sign in it, because people were not passionate about inviting folks. The, the flame that they once had when they were early Christians had, had cooled down. I, I, you know, whatever reason, it cools down. Uh, they became complacent. Uh, you know, some folks say, when I've gone to church consultations, oh, we really want folks, but, but don't let them sit in my seat. Don't let them park in my parking spot. Oh, and make sure their kids don't make a peep. You know what's the worst thing in the world? That right there in a church. Did you hear it? Nothing. Sardis was a dead church 
in the book of Revelation. Let me tell you, friends, I love, I love noise. I love excitement. I, let me tell you, you start shouting amen during sermons, and I'll add five minutes to every one. Because <laughs> that means you're listening. That means you're excited. That means there's something's moving. The Spirit is moving inside you. And you're getting excited. And when you leave here excited, guess what? You're going to tell somebody. We're going to fan that flame that was first in your life into a, a glowing, burning fire. And guess what? If all of us are doing that, we're going to be like a torch. We're going to be like a blowtorch. So I ran out of time at the other service. I ran out of time at this service. There's probably like, what I don't know, Kim, what, another 12 verses of Scripture? You can go read the rest of 1 Timothy, or 2 Timothy verse 1, or chapter 1, and figure that out. Anyway, here's where I want to go. Here's where I want to go. Friends, there is a lot of space in my mind, from, from embracing the E word, from embracing the I word. It takes, it takes a lot for us to get to evangelism where it's comfortable, where it's not fearful. But I think we all, I think we all can begin with the I word, which is invite. Uh, and so I want to give you some homework this week for, for, for inviting. Uh, in fact, we had a whole bunch of these little invite cards because I've done this a million times. Well, hey, I want to tell you about my church sunrise. Oh, it's such a great church. Well, you're going to have to go to here. You're going to have to here or go to the website or, or all this stuff. But now we've got these nice little, little cards. It says Sunrise Church on it. It has our address. has our website. has a, a QR code for you QR code people. I don't know how that works. It's a bunch of squiggly lines. And they can scan that and they, and they can find out all about us. But it gives you something tangible that you can hand in a conversation. It fits well into a front pocket. Uh, it doesn't bend. It doesn't fold. It sits right there next to your driver's license if you carry it in your front pocket. And you can just hand that out. It says, there's exciting things happening at sunrise. And we want you to be part of it. Now, can you do that? Maybe practice it with me. Say, there are exciting things happening at sunrise. And we want you to be part of it. And I've got a card that you can take with you. See how easy that is, friends? You know what? Somebody may be sitting in your seat next week because of that. <laughs> so uh, what we're going to do, we're going to have communion in a moment. Uh, and we've got these cards up here. And as you come by for communion, I would encourage you to, to grab one, two, three, ever how many you think you'll hand out this week. And then when you hand them out, you know, take the extra steps. Hey, I'll come pick you up. Or, or, hey, I'll meet you at the front door. Or, hey, you can come sit with me, but not in my seat, in the seat next to me. <laughs> Even give them your parking spot. Help them find the coffee. Uh, help them feel like, wow, this is a pretty neat place. Help them get excited about what excites you. Be practicing. Don't give them a 10-minute speech of what you like. Maybe give them a one-minute speech of what's most exciting. What brings you here? What keeps you here? about sunrise, because sunrise points to the good news, what Jesus Christ has done for us. And while you're at it, if, you really, I mean, if you're really over-aggressive, don't be too over-aggressive. We've still got some of these left over from last week that has the information about what's coming up with VBS and uh, our, our summer camps for our young kids and our Eagles concert sermon series in July. I mean, like, my poor daughter said, who are the eagles? <laughs> I have failed as a father. <laughs> Friends, it's a matter of just taking a step in faith, sharing good news about what Christ Jesus has done for you. Let's pray. God, as we come here today, I just give you thanks for the power of what your Holy Spirit can do for us. Lord, I don't have the words. We don't have the words uh, to, to evangelize. We don't even have the words sometimes to invite. We have this great concept, this great idea, and when we wake up, it's gone. So Lord, we need your Holy Spirit to help us, to help others come to know who you are. Give us an opportunity this week to hand out a card, to invite a person, to tell them what is great about knowing you and a little bit about why 
We love Sunrise. And Lord, then we'll work together to help disciples make disciples who make disciples. Lord, we also come here today because, wow, what a great opportunity uh, on this Sunday after Easter that we can, we can come together and celebrate Holy Communion. Uh, Lord, I would pray that as we presented a bread and cup offering to you, that your Holy Spirit would come upon these gifts so they would become your presence in us, with us, and through us. Uh, Lord, help us to be drawn to this opportunity to know you even better. Lord, help us set aside any of our distractions. Lord, hear our confessions of those things that have separated from us, from you, and know that you invite us in. Lord, we pray all of that in your name. Amen. Friends, we are celebrating Holy Communion today, and uh, let me give you some instructions. Uh, There are folks that are standing up here in the front. Uh, You're invited to come by the side aisles, everybody through the side aisles. Uh, to come forward, take communion. Uh, You can stop and uh, spend some time praying at the kneeling area here uh, and then return to your seats. Everyone here this morning is welcome. Uh, I would invite first our our music folks, our tech people, our camera people, if they'd like to come uh, as we're preparing for this, that they may be served first. Uh, And then we begin in the back of the room. Uh, And the folks in the back of the room, please come forward. If you're in the center sections, uh, as you come the outside aisles, and come back down the middle. You can return to your seats outside, folks. There are cutouts there uh, that you can cut across back to your outside aisles. Friends, this is the body and blood of Jesus. This is our celebration of becoming a community through Christ's love for us. So I invite you to come and receive what God offers to us. Folks online, if you would like to celebrate communion at home, I just ask that you would send us an email. We bless communion elements and we will get them to you. My friends, this is what Christ invites us to. Come.
you to stand with us.
Simply lead me, Lord, in your love to those around me. Help me to share. God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us now as we leave this place where we have worshiped so that we may go out and practice our inviting. We go in your name, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>